Hello, I'm State Representative Jim Beakey from the 84th House District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Brad Miller. I'm speaking today with State Representative Jim Beakey, who serves the 84th House District, which includes all of Mercer County and parts of Audley's, Dark, and Shelby Counties. Representative, as always, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me again, Brad. I always look forward to these sessions. Um, we are under the warm glow of the studio lights today, but uh, as all Ohioans know, and actually, people throughout the country, this has been a pretty rough winter, which has led to uh, some issues with uh, school districts having to call off days, and many of them have uh, gone over their uh, limit of allotted days um, to be called off. Um, so there are a number of options available for these mm -hmm. districts to, uh, to take. The governor has um, proposed extending the number of calamity days. Do you support that plan? I certainly do. As a matter of fact, I supported the plan because uh, uh, first and foremost, we have to have a, a, a climate that's conducive for safety for the children. And we want to make sure that uh, there's, there's no issues and accidents in, make, in getting those kids to school. And of course, the 84th House District is so very rural. And when you, when you have days that are sub-zero, the last thing you want is the kids out in the rural areas being outside in, in that bitter cold and, and with, with uh, a lot of snow and so on. And uh, so that, that is a prime consideration for me as, as I supported that bill as it worked its way through the process. Um, you've also supported a, uh, something that are called uh, E-Days. Mm -hmm. um, can you first simply tell us what E-Days are? E-Days are, are elect with this age of elect electronics, why? of which I don't participate too much. <laughs> the, um, uh, it, it's a, a very efficient way of, of, of making sure that the children have electronity, electronically homework to do uh, when, they're, when they're off school, and it's, it's, it's really good. And then, of course, we have the blizzard bags because there's some schools that, that don't have uh, uh, the ability to use that uh, school-wide, uh, so we have paper and pencil and with assignments so that the kids can get their work done. And as a matter of fact, that's a, that was a pilot that uh, really started at Mississippi Valley High School in my district in Dark County. Uh, I also want to tell you that uh, going back to the Calamity Day uh, issue that uh, uh, most of the schools in the 84th House District are making those days up. And uh, uh, so while we have given them the ability to have extra days off, uh, they're dedicated to making sure that the children get their full amount of education. You brought up a point earlier about uh, the 84th district being very rural, and there's obviously a lot of rural school districts throughout the state, but also a lot of urban districts as well, so uh, a wide range there. Um, d is the goal to find a plan that can best fit all the districts, or do you think it would be ideal to uh, allow these districts to have as much flexibility as possible? Well, I'm obviously for all the flexibility as possible. And uh, in particular, you know, here's, you have not only different uh, weather conditions, you also have different uh, topography. For example, my district's a flat district where you, where if you get uh, 10 inches of snow with wind howling and blowing across, you might get a t three foot before it's done, see? So you, you have, to, there's just all kinds of considerations here that have to be taken into account. Um, moving on to another topic that uh, impacts education uh, is the Common Core mm -hmm. state standards. Um, it's been a pretty contentious issue. Uh, what are both sides saying? Where do they find agreement or disagreement on well, this? Well, the plan? common ground is everyone, everybody wants more productivity in the classroom. They want better education for our children. And so that's, that's the starting point. There are those on, who are for Common Core that think this is a, a better way to get to that end, and there are those who are opposed to Common Core that uh, feel likewise. Um, one bill has been uh, introduced that would address uh, Common Core, House Bill 413, uh, joint sponsored by Representative Stoutberg and Brenner. Um, do you support the bill? Do you, how do you see this affecting Ohio? Well, of course uh, I do because uh, I support House Bill 413 because uh, th this park, this, uh, it's Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Career. 
that ought to tell you something right there, just the name of it. And so what, what we're doing with the legislation is, is basically saying, no, it, we, we want to we slow down on that and, and, and so on, and then back it into the real goal of House Bill 237, which is to, to stop Common Core in Ohio. And uh, where are these bills in the legislative process right now? Well, they're both in, I believe they're in the uh, House Education Committee. And, and just so you understand, I'm very supportive of both. Uh, so I, you know, I, uh, it, it's, they're having hearings right now, and I'm, I'm doing everything I can uh, in the district, uh, working with uh, school superintendents and our, our people to, to take a step back and take a look at this. So a lot of issues right now uh, impacting education, for sure, in the state of Ohio. Well, there are. And, and, and really, I, the thing that I'm concerned most about Common Core is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm 73 years old. I've, I've been around uh, the track a few times. And I've seen many well-intentioned programs that start out uh, very, very on the right side. And then the federal government gets involved. And the next thing you know, they're in control. And when they get in control, look out. Uh, you know, Social Security. Uh, latest is Obamacare. If you you think that's these kind of things, are, and uh, you can just name program after program after program, that the longer they go, the worse they get. And and my biggest fear about the Common Core is that it's going to end up nationalizing public education. And we're better than that in Ohio. And and particularly, and certainly in my district, the 84th House District. Uh, I've got 20 school districts, uh, Brad, and on the new report card of English and math, 16 are A's, three are B's, and one's a C. Our schools are better than what Common Core is going to be. And what, coming down the road, you're going to be looking at curriculum that nobody knows yet, textbooks that, that aren't finalized, we don't know what's in them, and, and the cost. I mean, the hardware and the software cost uh, is, is something that nobody knows. And, and the other thing that I find interesting about this is one of my, you know, three of my favorite words are follow the money. And some of the biggest promoters of Common Core are the people that have the, the technology, the software and the hardware. It's, you know, it's all about the money. So flexibility is not just uh, dealing with calamity days, but all sorts of things. Uh, Absolutely. The uh, marketplace of ideas there. Another uh, topic that we're going to touch on, uh, by now most Ohioans are aware that um, there was recently an execution in Ohio that uh, brought with it some complications um, and kind of brought the issue into the public eye, which probably did not uh, assume to be seeing. Um, you've consist consistently stated your support of the death penalty, but you um, have said that there are some changes that need to be made. What are some of those changes? Well, the first thing that needs to be done is we have to look at the laws, how they're structured, to see what we can do uh, with regards to the being constitutionally uh, right to narrow that time frame that once a person who has committed a hyenas crime that has been sentenced to death will be able to get will be able to be executed a whole lot quicker than what this what the system allows today i mean it, it's just the cost to the taxpayers uh, for hyenas murders for example who have been sentenced to death is horrendous and so I'm looking at ways to uh, how we can kind of speed that process up once once that uh, judge has made that made that uh, decision to execute that criminal. So when we talk about the uh, how expensive it is, a lot of that is uh, because of the time frame. That's a lot of it, and then also because of this per the particular case that everybody's uh, concerned about right now, the McGuire case. And, and by the way, uh, the victim in that case was a constituent of mine uh, in Preble County in 1989 when that murder occurred. And what, you know, I mean, this here is a, a person who, who uh, raped this young lady who was eight months pregnant. He stabbed her, he choked her, and, and then carted her off and threw her away to die. And, and, and the family of the, the, the murderer is suing the state because of cruel and unusual punishment because it tw took 26 minutes for this man to die. How long do you think it took him to perform that crime on that innocent lady? I mean, you know, the, sometimes things get out of whack, and I just want to make sure that uh, in the future that we can, can, can have a more efficient way 
to handle this process so that it doesn't cost the taxpayers more while we're bringing those murderers to justice. We'll close with a, a topic that would certainly impact your district with it being a one of, if not the top, agricultural district in the state, and that is uh, Senate Bill 150 addressing um, nutrient management standards. Uh, what are some of the features of this bill that uh, people should be aware of? Well, the, t the two big issues that we're looking at in this bill is to, one, give training to uh, the applicators of commercial fertilizer certification so that the that, the, that when they apply uh, chemical fertilizers to the, to the ground and soil that it's done in the most efficient, best way so that we don't have runoff. That's the big issue. I mean, uh, in, in, in both commercial and in animal uh, manure, what we have is uh, phosphorus. We want to keep the nutrients out of the streams and the lakes. And as you well know, the, the 84th House District contains Grand Lake St. Mary's and it's, it's been uh, a real source of uh, uh, algae growth in the last several years that's caused quite a few problems. And so uh, what we want to do is kind of bring everybody up to speed in the agriculture community so that they can apply the fertilizer, the chemical fertilizer, the, in a most judicious way. And then we, we give them the option, once they're trained and they can are certified to apply uh, the chemical fertilizer that we give them an opportunity to, to develop uh, nutrient management plans so that in the case of some lawsuits, for example, they would have an affirmative defense because they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. So while this bill will have implications for the entire state, it might be safe to say that it uh, could be uh, of most importance in your district in West Central Ohio. Well, it is. It's huge, and it's it's huge up in northwestern Ohio too. Now, on the animal side, uh, you know, my district has a lot of an, uh, livestock and poultry operations, and those folks are currently certified by the Ohio Department of Agriculture. They're they're very good stewards in 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 applying uh, uh, manure to the in in chemicals for that matter to the, to the ground now because they have to to have. Uh, to have their permits to operate the, the, the larger facilities. So that's a, that's a big issue here, but it's also in my district because of the animal and poultry side in northwestern Ohio and other Ohio where there is not as much livestock uh, and poultry where it's mostly crops, uh, grains and so on, it, it's important uh, as well to have this commercial certification uh, as proposed in uh, Senate Bill 150. Uh, we have a couple minutes left. Mm -hmm. We've obviously talked about a, a number of uh, important and heavy issues today. You will encourage your constituents to share with you their ideas uh, and uh, concerns. As you know, at the end of the program, sure. you share with them how best they can contact you here in Columbus. Well, of course, our phone number is area code 614-466-6344. Uh, we, we just love your opinions, and each month we have as you know, a, a survey. And so I would encourage uh, everybody in the 84th to fill out the survey. And the survey is at, at tinyurl.com slash Beaky March 2014. That's our current survey. And I hope you'll take a minute to fill that out and let us know what you think. And then, of course, you can email me at rep84 at ohiohouse.gov. I just love to know what's on your mind because that helps me work for you better here in Columbus. And that information uh, is at the bottom of the screen. Representative, as always, a pleasure. Thanks for sitting privilege. down with us. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. Thanks for watching.